Hi, welcome to the channel Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. Today we're reviewing these Gal Mini Monitor speakers. Now these are two-way rear port firing speakers. There's the port on the back. Well, these are quite solidly built. They've got quite a nice feel to them. You know, quite a nice finish. These wouldn't have been very expensive when they come out. I think it was about 50 or 60 pounds, somewhere around there. So it was the bottom end of their budget kind of range of speakers, or their range of speakers, should I say. This would have been down the bottom end. Now these are rated at six ohms, 60 watts, and the frequency response is 60 hertz to 15 kilohertz, and the sensitivity is 87 dB. Now these measure 267 millimeters by 177 millimeters in width, and 167 millimeters in depth. Now what I usually do is take these apart and have a look inside, so let's get on with that. Okay, there it is on the floor. Now if we have a little look inside, as you can see inside there, uh, I've marked off a few arrows here. First of all, on the left hand side, the two arrows pointing to the crossover, and the crossover nuts, screws, uh, connections there. Just make sure they're nice and tight. Uh, either do a man tight and if possibly maybe get a pair of pliers or something like that. Just to make sure they're nice and tight. But don't overdo it so you start cracking the mount at the back of the speaker where they're mounted on, uh, so to speak. But nice and tight because these do come loose. You'd be surprised people pushing in banana plugs, screwing things in, you know, spades and bare wires, etc. All that kind of thing. You don't know who's had them in the past. You know, make sure they're nice and tight with the vibrations of the speaker as well. They do come undone. Even the ones with the glue on, the glue starts cracking and then nuts can come undone. And obviously you want a nice, secure, tight connection uh, to the uh, speaker and the crossover so uh, you know, you're getting the most out of it. On the right hand side there, you can see the tweeter. Uh, this is a 10 millimeter polydome uh, ferro fluid liquid cooled tweeter. And again, them connections there with the uh, yellow arrows, make sure they're nice and tight. Pull them off, see if they come off easy. If they come off too easy, just give them a little crimp or something with your pair of pliers or your hand or something like that. Don't overdo it so you can't get them back on. But uh, you know, just do it so they're nice and tight and they're nice and firm. So uh, all the uh, all the energy and everything coming is going to the tweeter. Okay, and there's the base unit there. You can see the main driver is 130 millimeter. That's a five inch uh, doped pulp unit. Uh, and again, obviously keep make sure them connections are nice and tight. And in the uh, back of the speaker there, you can see the screw. Uh, kind of connection, screw plug connections with a banana uh, type plug. Okay, so how do these speakers actually sound? Before I go on to that, I've been quite admiring these speakers really because they're quite well made. I'm quite surprised this would have been bottom of the range at the time. And uh, for, you know, it would have been 40 or 50 pounds, somewhere 50, 60 pounds, something, somewhere around there anyway here in the UK. And they've got quite a nice finish. Everything's been really done nicely. You know, you expect that maybe to be a, a dearer speaker than what it actually is. It's been really finished off nicely. What I usually do is I put these on a table, put them on stands, I put them near the corner of the room, put them on a little bookshelf, all that kind of stuff. Because these are bookshelf speakers, so you know, one of the places you're probably going to put them maybe is on a bookshelf, you know, i.e. the name. But some people have them on stands, etc. So I will do a demo with them on the stands or a different track of music. But I've got these with four other speakers and a track of music that you may want to listen to if you just want to get a, an idea maybe what these sound like on a table or a bookshelf, something like that. Uh, and I'll do a link at the top to that video now. And uh, I will do another video, it's not done yet, but I will do it, the link will be at the top now, when that is ready, and that'll be on a set of stands, so maybe give you another idea how these sound on a set of stands without the table actually interfering you know, with the two speakers. So how do these actually sound? Well, I usually get the usual suspects out. I usually bring out about five or six different amplifiers and receivers. Don't forget, these are old receivers. These are 40 years old plus, but still sound fine today. They're still in top shape. And they're quite a well-regarded, you know, for the bottom end budget kind of uh, amplifier and receivers. They're still quite well-regarded and collectors out there today buying these units. So they're not rubbish by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so they give a fair account, I think of our, you know, any speakers or anything I test with them sound. In my opinion, I can only go with what I've got in front of me, don't forget, and always best to maybe look at other forums and other YouTube videos to get more of a general feel if you're gonna go out and buy any of these items. I found these speakers to be quite a neutral sounding speaker, really. The bass was a bit lacking. Uh, obviously, you can put them on tables, you can put them on side units, you can put them up near the wall. It would increase it, but it's still still lacking. I wanted a bit more bass for the bass line, the bass guitar. Uh, the drums, etc., you know, the bass drum and that. I wanted a bit more bass, really, and you know, I was going to the amplifier to turn the bass up more to get a bit more out of it. Don't forget, I do all my testing with the amplifier loudness off and both, you know, tone control set on zero, level out, whatever you want to call it, that kind of setting. So, yeah, I wanted a bit more bass for these. These, like I say, a bit bass lacking. 
mid range I found to be a bit pronounced, a bit you know just a tad pronounced the mid range. Um, the vocals, like I say, a bit pronounced here as well. Just wanted them tamed back, especially the female vocals. Just wanted them tamed back a little bit. Uh, nothing fast, but you know it was just a little bit. You know it could have been just tamed back a little bit. I think the uh, vocals on this and the mid range. Uh, it's fine. You know when there's no vocals in that plane. The, the, the bass seems to have a bit more freedom, I think, and seems to sound a little bit better. But as soon as the vocals and the mid range come in, the bass kind of like the, the bottom end frequencies and that seem to take backstage there. Uh, and this, you know, just get more of the mid range and vocal frequencies. Like I say, the male vocals didn't seem as bad. The vocals are a little bit edgy on the female, a little bit of sibilance uh, creeping in, as you would expect uh, from a bottom of the range kind of speaker. You know, you're not going to get anything fantastic for that. But, you know, still fine, still, you know, quite acceptable on that. Um, the high frequencies were, you know, sounded nice, they sounded quite detailed, they just rolled off a bit as well. Uh, but other than that, they were fine, you know, quite acceptable, you know, sounded quite nice. But with the combination of them rolled off top end frequencies and that lacking of the bass, this did make this speaker sound hollow at times, uh, just to kind of like, I think, you know, you're going to get that, I think, when you've got like a neutral sounding speaker, the top end rolled off and the bottom like a bit lacking, it can kind of make the speaker sound a bit hollow. If you kind of had a drum and bass with this speaker, no vocals, not much mid-range going on. It sounded quite nice, you know what I mean? Um, top end and that, and drum and bass, and, and, and going like that. No vocals, not much mid-range going on. It did sound quite nice. Still a bit bass stacking, but as soon as the vocals come in, they seem to take precedent and just put the, uh, the bass, the bass line, uh, the lower frequencies, just into the background a bit. Well, I did say I'd team these up with the 331 and 441 receiver by Sansui. Now, I thought I'd mention it. It's worth a mention that... Uh, well, Stereo Review X, I'm sure quite a few of you that come here do follow Stereo Review X, a bit more upmarket than this channel, but he does review them two receivers uh, through his range of receivers, etc. And he says them receivers, I think I'm not too sure exact quote, but he says them receivers make any speaker sound better or nice. Now, I'm not saying these are any speakers, but I did find with them two receivers, apart from all the others, they just made these speakers just sound a little bit nicer. You know, they just tame that mid-range down a little bit uh, so the, the bass would come back, you know what I mean? Like I said before, as soon as that mid-range comes in, that bass seems to, that bass bottom, lower frequency seems to be put into the background. Whereas they tamed that mid-range, it didn't lose so much of the bottom end there. It didn't go so far in the background, so to speak. So they made these sound a little bit nicer. I just thought I'd mention that. Maybe amplifier and receiver matching will make these sound just a little bit better. There may be some other amplifiers and receivers that you team up with. Okay, going to the sound stage of these speakers. The sound stage never really went beyond the two speakers. In fact, I don't think it ever did. Kind of stayed in between the two speakers. It had a reasonable amount of depth to it. It's quite focused. You know, it sounded quite nice. The instrument placement was fine. You know, it all sounded quite nice. So they've done a good job there, that's for certain. And don't forget, you're going to pick these up for about £30 here in the UK, so it's not a lot of money. You may not even pay that for them, to be honest with you. Uh, in American places, like $30 or $40, somewhere around there. And you're getting quite a nice looking, quite a well-made, quite a nice finished, and you know, quite a nice sounding speaker. You know, just be a bit careful. Like I say, these are neutral sounding, so maybe, you know, be careful with the amplifier receiver you're actually going to team them up with. But other than that, I think, you know, you're going to have quite a bit of fun with these. Okay, so that's it. Until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.